So I recently stumbled upon this article that kind of went viral in the internet called 20 things I've learned in my 20 years as a software engineer by Justin. And I realized it's actually a great source of information for beginner software developers and people who are trying to get into the field because it kind of gives you or lets you anticipate all the things that are you're going to be facing throughout your careers in the near future. So I don't have 20 years of experience, but I have seven and a half years of experience. And I can give a pretty good recap from my point of view, because I've also worked at tiny and large companies in different countries with different nationalities. And I could definitely resonate with most of these points. And if you're an experienced developer, also leave a comment with your opinion. I'm going to definitely read it. And I'm very curious what you think. All right. So the very first point is I still don't know very much. And I think this one hits the hardest if you're a beginner, especially. Because maybe in a different field, if you've been working in this field for 10 years or even 20 years like Justin, you will know ins and outs. But in tech, especially in our sector, it's changing so fast that it's pretty much impossible to at some point to say that I know everything. Of course, especially if you studied computer science and you have very good fundamentals and you know the theory very well, this will help you a lot throughout your career. But it's still impossible because there are so many things growing in parallel, like literally web development that I'm mostly doing 10 years ago in 2014 was completely different than what it is now. And honestly, there are so many things that I still don't know, even if I'm focusing on software development and in the, on the UI part, like there is uh, Next.js, there is React with Next.js, and there's server-side rendering that I really don't know much about. Like, I know that it's existing. I've watched one tutorial and I already forgot everything. So I don't know very much. And I can acknowledge it that, okay, I'm a software developer, but I'm completely missing this part of the software development and I'm completely fine with it. It's, it's really impossible to know everything. The second point is the hardest part of software is building the right thing. And this kind of focuses on the part called Designing software is mostly listening activity, and we often have to be part software engineer, part psychic, part anthropologist, and, and so on. So meaning, if you're a software developer, don't expect that you will only be coding and you will only be sitting in front of your laptop when clicking, pressing the buttons on your keyboard. No, you actually have to be a good communicator. You have, you will, you're going to have colleagues that you need to communicate with, you have to be very clear with what you're saying. You will be attending different meetings to resolve conflicts or agree on something. So social skills are very important. And being a software developer is not only about writing code and or designing code. The next point is the best software engineers think like designers. And one of my former bosses, when I was an intern, my managers told me one thing that still stuck with me until today. He said, you're a software developer, but you also need to be a designer and you also need to be a product owner or at least think like them. Meaning if you have a, some kind of a task that you're working on, you cannot say you cannot do the bare minimum as a software engineer and, pro and literally neglect the user experience, how your customers are going to be using the app that you're building because you're building the app not for yourself. You're building the app to be used by others. So you really need to think about as a customer who are going to be using it as a designer, because you need to take into account different UX aspects. And of course, as a product owner, who is like a middleman between the customer and the developer and really put yourself into their shoes as well. The seventh point is called, if you don't have a good grasp of the universe of what's possible, you can't really design a good system. And I completely agree with this. And especially if you're more advanced in your career and you're thinking about being able to design systems to architect systems. I'm not saying you have to be a system architect who like, was like a the senior senior who is already able to kind of put the puzzles into one and let people create stuff. But you still cannot design a very good functioning system if you don't know the, the bits and pieces of everything. So let's give you an example. You cannot really design a backend system that includes a proxy, includes an API gateway, maybe a server, and maybe a database all together. If you don't know how databases work, if you don't know how to build a good API and clean API, if you don't know whether you need a load balancer or not, 
So you really need to get hands-on experience with all of those things to have a, to know how bits and pieces work, to be able to bring them all together in a good system design. All right. So that's why check out my system design and architecture playlist because I'm publishing many videos regarding that. The eighth point, every system eventually sucks. Get over it. Really, there's nothing perfect. Even your perfect code has imperfections. It's very subjective. It will be fine for you, but another developer who's maybe even more experienced or even less experienced with than you still will find some imperfections in your code. And also, there's no code that doesn't have any technical debt. There will always be technical debt and you will always have bugs. So just do your best as much as you can and yeah, just get over it. Another point is look for technological sharks. And this is very important, especially if you're a beginner. As a beginner, you will be probably flooded, especially if you're in the JavaScript world, you will be flooded with all these libraries, shiny libraries and shiny frameworks. And you will think maybe you need to learn all of them. But actually, no, you look out for sharks, sharks like uh, React, sharks like Angular that's, that have been in the space for many, many years, sharks like MySQL, all right? So all these things have survived for so many years for the reason because they're really good at solving their problems and people are still going to keep using them for probably the next 10 years. That's why focus on those things and don't try to learn everything and some because most of those everything stuff that are in everything are going to get outdated within the next 2 or 3 years. So make sure that you're focusing on the sharks not dinosaurs, because dinosaurs will probably die out. So number 18 is software engineers, like all humans, need to feel ownership. And maybe you don't feel this as a junior developer, but you will re really notice the impact as you go, because especially in Agile, people really get motivated not by money only nowadays, but also by ownership or, or how much impact they can make on the product or the company that they're working. So always make sure that the t within the team that you're working on, you let other software developers or your colleagues have some ownership of the on the pro of the product that they're working on together with you, and hopefully your teammates will do the same for you. Point nineteen: interviews are almost worthless for telling how good of a team member someone will be, and I, I really noticed that it's really hard to hire people first of all because it's really hard to focus to to know what to you need to focus on. And if you, even if you do think that you made the right decision, it's like a flip of a coin. The, you, never, you can never know the person 100% just from the first interview and they can change 180 degrees in the next month. So you really need to trust your instincts and at least try to validate the technological savviness, the tech savviness of the person um, as well. Because many people, like I also did, was thinking that, well, if they're a good communicator, if they're a good team player, they can always learn how to code. And actually, I think I mentioned that in one of my older videos, in one of my first videos, but I think there's a good chance that they will not. There's a good chance that they will turn out to be uh, maybe lazier than you expected. But if you're, they already have a good technological basis, if they already know how to write good code, then you cannot take this away from them. Point 20, always strive to build a smaller system. If you're an employee and you're working for a company, this code has to be maintained by you and people after you who will join the company after especially you leave. And you know, maintaining code is kind of a pain in the butt. It's not an easy task. So the less, the, the smaller your system is, the less code you've written, the less components, modules your system has, the less it is going to be to maintain your um, code, the maintain the system, and future developers of the company are not going to blame you on because of this. So whenever you're designing a system, whenever you're designing your software, always think about the smallest solution first. So guys, this was it. I think there were many good points. I will link the article in the description below if you want to read the whole article. But I think I covered the ones that I most resonated with. And if you did as well, let me down in a comment. I'm going to read and react to it as well. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.